All right, sorry about that delay. I had to make sure that the uh, audio was killed on the uh, replay. All right, looks like we've got some people already here. Christopher, good to see you. Richie Z. Lee G, good to see you, man. Spaceball one, she's gone to plat. <laughs> wow, Spaceballs, man. I haven't seen that in I don't know how long. That's crazy. One, good to see you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, all the uh, Christopher uh, David's right. All the SMWS talk has got me like Jones and Fred Glass. I do have a. An unopened sample of a Lafroig back there, um, but I'm kind of holding out on that one. It's a it's a small sample, but yeah, I'll have to. Uh, oh, Loch Ness, good to see you too. I'll have to uh, wait on that one. Um, I had a Glen Scotia that I really liked too. I tried the um, uh, SMWS bottle uh, version of it and they're right I mean it's hard to find one that you don't like I mean it could be any distillery Eden Mill which is a new one it could be Linkwood I mean I've, I've yet to have a bad bottle Tom I really good to see you man hope you're doing well I haven't seen in a while so hope things are going well for you we're gonna take a look at a couple bottles that are a little different um, they're on my distillery checklist that I, I'd like to, to take a look at. I haven't had any, either one of these before, uh, no bottle from either one, uh, surprisingly. Um, I think I've had a Blad Knock, but I think it was an independent bottling, actually. I never had a distillery bottling. With the Glenelic, I, I think it was either similar or that might, this might be a newer distillery. I think that, uh, that they launched just last year, but they've got 18 and uh, maybe it was a relaunch. I'll have to look and see what uh, more details of when they actually started, started because um, Glenelicky wasn't really on my radar until recently. I They have a new line that just popped up out of the blue. So uh, be looking at that. So we're gonna look at the, um, the Bladnock uh, Adela 15 year. Now the Bladnock is a, the Blydenock is a, a Lowland Scotch, which is definitely way outside my wheelhouse. Typically, uh, Lowlands are usually, I think, like um, Akintoshin. I think some of them are triple distilled, almost like a or two and a half times stilled, like almost like an Irish whiskey would be. But um, this one, I have a feeling, is not going to be similar to to those. But we'll we'll see. Um, and then the other one is a, um, the Ganoliki is a, uh, space side and we'll be looking at an 18 year version of that. Uh, both are near 46, uh, percent ABV, which is nice. The Ganoliki is 46 flat. The Blood Nicodella 15 is, uh, 46.7. I'm not sure why the 0.7, but I'll take what I can get. Anything close to 48 to me is a good, a good sign. I really uh, I'm looking forward to both. They both have sherry influence, but they're both different types of sherry. Uh, the Black Nagadella 15 is going to be Oloroso sherry buds made of Spanish and American oak, um, which uh, the Black Nagadella distillery was mothballed from around 2010 and was revived in 2017. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the single malt is. Prized of stocks that were aging prior to its closure, aged for a minimum of 15 years, and Oloroso sherry buds made from Spanish and American oak, some which were first fill, which is a good sign. It's not chill filtered and it's art, not a um, not uh, artificially colored, so it's a uh, natural color, not chill filtered, 15 years, 46.7. And it, it typically rates fairly well from, I haven't looked in the reviews as far as details, but just like a, you know, seems to get a pretty good rating um, out of a lot of scotch I've seen. The Glenelicky 18 is really similar, uh, same rating, uh, same profile, same ABV, uh, has the age statement you're looking for. It's not chill filtered, it's not colored, but this one, is dealing with uh, PX sherry, which is a little sweeter. It also has a LaRoche sherry, and it's uh, got the American oak casks. So we're missing the Spanish, but we do have the PX, which makes it a little bit of a difference. 
Hey, Gawkin, good to see you. Uh, and good to see you, Dram. I'm glad that you uh, hung out with me uh, from California there. Uh, hopefully, you, I think you said that you've uh, had the Adela, not the Glenelicky 18, which is a newer um, newer bottling, I guess you'd say. I, I was surprised to see it because at first, uh, a few months ago, it was not even available. Uh, so something that's recently available, at least here in Maryland, which is nice. Looks like uh, Loch Ness is... Uh, Wow, got that Craigmore 12, Glendronic cast strength, and Adele Winnie uh, Game of Thrones. Huh. Nice. That's a that's a nice uh, spread, I'd say. Well, let's start off with. Now, I was trying to decide what, which would be the best to start with here. I guess let's go young and old, maybe. I, I, it probably doesn't really matter as much with these because neither one repeated by any means. Let me double check that. I don't. I didn't sense any peat. No, these are both single malts. One lowland, one space side. Let's start with the lowland, and uh, typically a lighter profile. It's really got a nice dark, darker color. Uh, this is the 15, and this is the 18 on my left. It's noticeably different. Surprisingly, both uh, natural color. Um, but the Glenelicky is a little lighter in color. I, I, I'm not sure if that really makes a difference um, with the overall score, but the uh, initial reaction is kind of, kind of perplexing to me that it's a little darker, but that's okay. The Glenelicky is um, going to probably being a uh, – let's go back to uh, being Lowlands. I mean, you would think it would be uh, – Really light, but I mean the Oloroso sherry butts with the Spanish and American oak. It sounds like it's going to be quite a, an amazing amount of flavor. But ooh, that's a nice nose. A lot of fruits from the get go. That was the first thing that I noticed. Your deep red red ruby fruits. Your raspberries and. Strawberries and currants, black cherries. Really thick. It's almost like you're, you're smelling jam or something. You can detect a little bit of the sweetness in there, too. Um, the funny thing is, this is not the one with the PX. Um, but thankfully, maybe it's because they're sherry butts. Not positive, but hey, Trooper Henry, good to see you, man. The, um, I'm thinking that uh, it marries well. It's got some savory notes to it, too. I'm getting some, like, cashew nuts. A little slight peanut on the sides. Not really getting any florals, but I don't really miss them right now. This is neat. I'm not doing anything with water yet. Uh, water might bring some of that floral out, but um, definitely getting a strong sense of a group of fruit, the sweetness, and the savory. But thankfully, it's not a vegetal sweet uh, savory. It's more of a nuttiness. And it's probably because of both the Spanish and American oak. Uh, the wood, I think, is coming through that with that. Seems well balanced. It, I, I can see why why it rates high. It's it's definitely got a solid nose. It took a while to open up, though. Um, to be honest, when uh, my initial nosing of the blood knot was was kind of like, well, it's good, but it's really faint and subtle. But Sherry really, really. The notes come through, and, and the nuttiness gets more and more intense the more it gets time to breathe. Really, I could I could nose it for, for quite a while and, and be happy, but let's have a little taste. <laughs> mm. Now, that's where the difference, I think, lies. Is The sweetness is on the nose on this guy. The palate's definitely more... Of a savory, spicy 
palette. There's some sweetness from the Laurel's with sherry, but it's got a really nice cream to it with, with that almost almost like to a, a peanut buttery kind of a, a finish to it. Fruits are still there. Kind of like having a really nice peanut butter and jelly, uh, a strawberry uh, jelly sandwich. <laughs> a little crust, like some, maybe like some graham crackers in there too. Hmm. I do like that. Getting some chocolatey notes too. Hmm. Trying to put my finger. It's not ginger. There's something else. Hmm. Yeah, I could, um, go on with Fig Newtons kind of thing. Subtle though. Good on the finish, you do get a little bit of tobacco leather. Which is nice too. Not overly dry. But it does have a drying quality to it. Not overly dry, but it does dry out on the finish a bit. Let's have a little drop. Close your eyes, Lee. <laughs> See what we get here. One drop, couple drops. See if that brings any florals or anything else. Yeah, they're looking full. Um, but I had do have a lot of space. I've been shifting around. I'm, I had a bunch of things over this way that you can't see. And I still have some things over there you can't see. Over here, I, I've been kind of moving things around. Uh, but there's plenty of space, thankfully, to um, house all the distilleries, I think, at some point. My only fear is some of my shelving is different sizes. And you know how some of these bottles, like the Anok bottles, are really tall. The Morangis are really, really tall. Uh, thankfully, some of the other ones, like Bonahaven, Bob Blair's, uh, Call home is they're a little shorter, so I gotta mix it up a bit. But uh, eventually, I'm gonna have it looking really cool. When I, once I have it kind of get toward the end of the wrap up of, of the distilleries, at least I'm gonna take a panoramic picture of the entire basement, and uh, that way you can get a good look of, of all of them, all the way starting over this way, all the way around the basement. It's uh, going to work out, I think, in the long run. Really looking forward to um, finishing that up because I'm looking forward to maybe scoping out some uh, SMWS bottles. They were talking about that on the show earlier with the dummies tonight. Um, those are some bottles I'd like to get my hands on and maybe start collecting some. Because um, they're right. I mean, once you've dabbled in a lot of whiskey drinking it's you're going to tend to move towards like uh cast strength um specialty bottles that you know do you have bottles on the floor <laughs> yeah yeah i got bottles everywhere to the to uh to an extent i mean there's there's organization to the chaos but there's a little chaotic stuff going on i i've got a i've, I've been accumulating some small uh, salsa bottles for um the group I, I work with, uh, Mr. Lee, if you're still there, you're probably aware. I've got uh, a few more bottles I'm trying to dig up to uh, do some pours for these guys and get some um, get some stuff out. But we'll see how that goes hopefully soon. Uh, my goal is uh, next week or so, if you're listening there, Lee, I think you opened up something nice earlier. Did you do the McAllen Rare or did you do um, – Something else, I can't remember. Hmm. I, 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 it's funny, at first I, I wasn't sure if I liked the nose, but the, the longer I give it, the better it, it, it is. First impression was like, nose and palate were, were you know, decent, finish was, was 
solid. I was going to go with a 3.5, but I, I think this is a lot better than that now. I, I think it's a solid four. I, I really do. A uh, little bit maybe could be improved on the, uh, but maybe it's a little bit, maybe a little s slightly more sweeter, but that's subjective, really. Oh, backpedal got a fresh uh, log of 16. Wow. Did I uh, pull a good bottle there, Dram? I'm hoping I didn't stir you wrong. Being summer in California and all, I thought you'd want something kind of middle, not too heavy, not too light, something that had a little complexity to it, but nothing too overly savory. I was looking for something kind of in the middle, and Othros, which I think is how you pronounce that, um, that was the uh, the one I remember liking. I think I had a 16 or a 12. I can't remember which one. It wasn't a 15. Um, it was a distillery bottle, um, I remember. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, Lee, but I'm pretty sure it was the Othroska 16 was the one that we uh, tried distillery bottle, but... Yeah, you could call it swarm here right now. That's cool. That's what I thought. You probably like that, or I was going to go with a Dalwini 15, but I wasn't sure what kind of mood you were in. <laughs> that was the safest bet, or maybe a Mortlock, one of those new Mortlocks I like to try. Haven't had the new 12, 16, or 18. I have seen them. Uh, the 12 recently I saw available. Um, had an independent bottling I wasn't too much into. It's good for blends, but... Um, Maybe a distillery version of the Mortlock might get me back on board. I'll have to try it out soon, hopefully, there. Oh, yeah, I killed the Tell Me 15 a bit ago, yeah. That's a good bottle, though. That's that's a good one to have uh, than that Game of Thrones new bottle. The Winter's Frost is good, but, yeah, as long as you got a 15, I'd like to try their distiller's edition, that, that Delmoney. Mmm. <laughs> like this, lets Lee know that they're great with water. Yeah, he's going to love that. <laughs> he's like a gremlin, man. You can't get water on that, dude. The Althros we had was a... Oh, Independent 11, was it really? I could have sworn it was like a... I must be thinking of the um, Altmore 16. That's what it was. The Altmore, A-U-L-T-M-O-R-E. Um, that's the one I think was the 16 distillery version, or 18 even. Um, we had one of the two, but okay. Well, that, that Othos I remember was, was a decent taste. I'm pretty sure I had to look at my notes to remember anything really about it. But, um, I remember both of those distilleries seem to do fairly well in the, uh, the tour that we're doing, I guess you could say Altmore. Yeah. It, uh, it's not one of those well-known distilleries, but, uh, had a good taste when I remember it kind of reminded me of a, uh, I think of a savory like a Longhorn or a Mortlock if I remember correctly, but it's been so long. It might be more like a, a Dalwini, but I have to go back and look. Hmm. Water really didn't do much to it. I didn't put a whole lot on, but um, still a great taste. I still get the savory notes. The cashews and the peanuts are still there. Really nice, surprisingly um, lawnmower-ish type of dram to me. I like it. That's what I would compare it to. I don't know where lawnmower. I think lawnmower is like. A, where are those guys? Are they? They're not lowlands. I'm pretty sure, but uh, I can't remember if they're space side or not. Lawnmower. At the space side, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, this this blood knock, I know it's lowlands, but it, it, it sips a lot more like a savory space side, like a long one to me. But um, no complaints. A little, a couple more years might help it. A little more sweetness, if I'm in the mood for more sweetness, might uh, help. Um. Maybe some more florals. That's why I'm, I'm looking at a four and not something higher. I get to get a few things that might even make it even better than what it is, but it's solid. I mean, nice presentation. It's a, it's a, it's a nice looking bottle. 
you know, I'm not, you're not usually one for flash or, you know, any, um, anything other than the juice, but I can appreciate a well done, uh, presentation. And, uh, I'd say that's pretty nice. Uh, I was talking to dream earlier. They were, he was talking about, they're trying to go for like a higher end, uh, you know, up their price a bit to, I guess, make it look like it's bad habit to do. I'm telling you, cause that Dalmor 15 is still 99, but when they rose that they're 18 up to 210, and uh, people weren't happy with, I'm sure that I went on my soapbox about it, but uh, it's just no brainer. I'm going to go for the 15 instead. And if, if they start raising prices on some of these 15s, then we'll go to the 12s and or vice versa. If it's just the 18s they're rising prices on, we'll go to the 15s. I mean, you know, a couple of years is going to kill it. Um, and if I can stay away from the NESs, I definitely will, uh, unless they're specialty and they're rare and, and have a special casking that, you know, is really intriguing. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice setup. I, I think it's a, a good buy. It's a little pricey here. I know uh, uh, Dram is saying in California, his was like 110, I think. Uh, here it was, uh, or was it lower? Was it 105? I can't remember what your price was there. Uh, here, I had the last bottle, surprisingly, uh, but it was going, um, let's see, Vlad. I know I saw it in here. Where'd it go? There we go. It was 120 here, which is about 10, I think, higher than what, uh, what uh, Dram was saying, 105, yeah, it's 120 here, so it's even higher, believe it or not, uh, in Maryland. Um, so I think you're right. They're they're really stretching the 15 price. Now, Helen Park charges something similar, maybe even more for their 15. Is it worth it? You know, that's where you kind of have to make that up for yourself. Uh, it is on quality on par with the Highland Park 15. I think it can, it can hang with it. Um, other 15s that are similar price points, that's a tough one. Like the Glendronic Revival here is $99 typically. Um, so it is a little bit higher, but it's, uh, you know, that's the thing. Like like the Dalmore 15 here is a little lower. It's about 90, 99 bucks. So, and it's, it's definitely not, I think, as good as this. If I had to pick between the Dalmore 15, the Bladnock 15, and um, anything, I would go with the Bladnock and whatever else before the, the Dalmore 15, uh, typically. It's it's very thin, um, kind of like a Glen Goyne. Had to be in the mood for it. It's uh, very light on the mouth coat. So it's uh, it's all subjective, though, if you like that lighter, you know, the lighter mouth coat. And, you got a couple bottles of 15. They were 99. Wow, you got lucky on that, man. His HP 15 is uh, actually like 115 to 120 pretty much here. Hey, Cartoon Face. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, good to see you back in action. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one here. Really did a good number on that one. Mm. Closest other, other distillery with this profile to me is a Longmorn. Uh, the 16 was very reminiscent to this dram. A little spicier. The Longmorn 16, I think, was a little more spicier, but this does have some nice spice to it, too. It's got a little bit of, um, oh man, what is it, cayenne pepper? Cayenne, definitely. Um, black pepper. I don't get any white pepper on this. It's more of a black pepper cayenne kind of a, a, a deal. Got a little spiciness, but um, still good. I think it's well balanced for, and that's why I think for four point two five maybe is it, of how well balanced it is. I might even go up to that, but. I'm almost talking myself into it. I'm not sure if I can go there. Dream prefers a, 15, a 12 uh, over the 15. I'm surprised, but um, to me, I, I can appreciate the Holland Park 15 because of all the the 
tropical notes I get from it that I don't get from the 12. To me, that's the big difference, uh, nice factor. The 12 has that really nice matchstick and has the, um, the heather, the slight peat, the fruit. It's got the goods. The 15 is that with that tropical flavor. Uh, I'm not sure if you're just not a tropical fan. Um, maybe some more florals might be over, you know, doing it a little bit too um, for what you're looking for. I think the 15 might have a, a one or two floral things I didn't get on the 12, but um, yeah, the 12, 15 has American. Oh, so much lighter. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, the 12 def definitely, I will give you something. The 12 definitely has a little more punch to it. Um, but the 18 is like freaking insanely good. So, I mean, unless you're looking for something to just have around, I would save up for the 18 if you can. Uh, 130 for the 18 versus 115 and 110-ish for the 15. I would go 18 all day long. That's just me, though. Tripper can't find the old HP 12, but got a couple bottles of the 15 and 18. Yeah. I got lucky. I had my three uh, old school 12, 15s, 18s up there. Uh, that was a good find. I got lucky on the uh, on those because it was during a tail end of them being available before they uh, relaunched their line. Wow, have you seen Ball Blair's new line? Everyone uh, on the last show, I think, was kind of surprised by uh, what they were doing. Uh, Going to try to get me a, a 90 before the uh, years uh, come out there. The, um, the I've got the 99, and it's outstanding. I, I've had the 05. It's, it's decent, but I'd love to get my hands on the 90 uh, before they uh, cut it and go from to 12, 15, 18-year uh options and they completely re redone their branding like their look i don't like it as much as the old look but maybe it'll grow on me i think a lot of other people had a similar experience so let's look at this glenelic before i talk myself to death <laughs> the, uh, this guy is a bit different like i said this is oloroso i'm sorry this is uh this is going to be sherry but we're now we're talking a blend of the px and olorosa sherry with american oak with this guy 18 years uh prior to 2017 when the distillery was acquired by the consortium led by master distiller billy walker glenelicky was rarely seen as a single malt whiskey the much anticipated core range of the glenelicky distillery from space side was finally launched in 2018 the this uh 18 year expression features uh mostly matured in px oloroso american oak cast so yeah I usually get some notes from distiller just to kind of give me a what I'm what am I you know in for kind of a information. Now the funny thing is, the nose here isn't really doing it for me. Let me do a cleanse to see if uh, if it helps a bit. I don't have a cold, thankfully, but. Uh, It's a lot more subtle, surprisingly, because at first the Blad Knock was the one that was not really giving me a whole lot, and it, over time it grew up. This one gave me a lot of nose out of the gate, and over time it, it kind of faltered, surprisingly. surprisingly. I mean, I get some fruits in there. So get some nice florals that, are, uh, that I did not get in the Blad Knock. Hmm. Even get some like um, really subtle mint. The, the first nose is kind of a com. It's complex. It's um. It's not like a fruit or floral right off the gate. The first thing I guess was is a combination of the floral fruit already together with some mint. It, it's it's a. Uh, I don't know if that's because it's just better refined, so I'm getting a lot more complexity. Um, it's just not as strong on the on the the nose, flavor wise. Let me do my own little. Uh, my coins are back there, and I don't want to 
have to keep getting up, getting down. So let's just give it a little cover here. And um, hey, whiskey Scott, good to see you. I like a pour of that Glenelg 18. Uh, I have the entire brand new lunch. Let's do good this one to try. All right, I'll see if I can uh, figure out something there, uh, Lee. And uh, I haven't tried any Glen new Glenelg's yet. Looking forward to it. Billy Walker did wonders with Glenelg. That's a little better. But it's still very more of a wide spectrum. It's not so much like the heavy fruit, heavy, savory cashew nut stuff. This is more of like um, a wide spectrum of those florals. I mean, you can get a lot of different things too. Like, it ranges from uh, my all over the place from honeysuckles, dandelions. With the citrusy like lemons and oranges. So this is coming through finally. I think some of that PX is, is finally it's it's very subtle on the on the sweetness though, on the fruits. Hmm. This is neat. There is that sweetness. Sweeter on the palate because of the PX, I'm sure. The Oloroso is still there, so it does have some savoriness to it. It gives it a, kind of a creamy, a creamy, um, like a fruit custard, like uh, fruit pudding kind of a texture. Hmm. This has gotten more savory with time. Might have to do a taste comparison here because I this is 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 uh, this one's got a lot of fudge coming through. It almost like a coffee note too. Like it first was fudge, and then it goes into like a, a big espresso cappuccino kind of a feel. That's good. It's just so, it's kind of a, of a wild ride, but I expect that from 18 because you want that, ex, that complexity. Not a little overly dry. They're both, I didn't really talk about the mouth coats on the, uh, the blood nog. Both the uh, medium mouth coats, nice, uh, not too thin, thankfully. Surprisingly, more. I mean, there's sweetness, but it's more of a, a savory sweetness than what I expected. Less fruit, more like pastry puddings and mousses and ch chocolate, mocha, espresso, that type of feel. Hmm. It's good. It's just so surprising. Like, because for the nose, it's like. It's it's so subtle that the palate's a lot thicker. It's definitely a kind of like eating a really well done uh, chocolate mousse that's um, extra thick and, and and pretty coaty. I mean, it's good. It's it's surprisingly, uh, thankfully, not dry. I'm trying to see how long the finish is. I mean, it's. It's medium leaf. Let's try one more. Add a little water, maybe. Hmm. A little spice in there too. More of a white pepper than um. The, the, this one was the black pepper and the um, cayenne. This one's more of a a real slight white pepper spice. Definitely uh, has more of a. Hmm. I wonder where that fudge is coming from. If it's the oak, I'm surprised. Like, I guess it's the combination of the PX and the uh, Oloroso, maybe. That's where it's coming from. Really, really well done uh, on the combination. That, that, that finish is really well executed. The 
pour a little more for some water. Mm. The the spice is it's funny. The spice is more up front on the blad knock, on the front end. The spice comes to you after the fudge hits you. The 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 the, the sweetness, the bready pudding, and the fudge hits you first. Then the spice comes in the back end on the Glenelaki, um, the eighteen. But thankfully, it's very coaty. It's not. It's not dry doesn't dry up and dissipate too fast so that's nice i'm not sure if i go ultra long let me see hmm. it's it's you know i'd say medium someone asked the price on the glen they have in Maryland, the new line, which is nice. Um, give me one second to identify. Here we go. Well, I'm lucky because my place has three expressions. They have a 10. Coming in the steep 75. Oh, I know why. Okay, it's cast strength, that's why. They got a 10 cast strength for 75. They have a 12, which is normal strength for 55. And they have the 18, which is this one for 150. So, there you go. If there was a 15, I would hope, if not cast strength, it would be closer to the $100 tops range. But that is my... Uh, what, what's available here. Um, now, I remember Trini and C, and cheers to Trini and C. They've been very, uh, um, what's the word for it? Um, it kind of hung out with me a little bit here and there with uh, helpful on the uh, retweets and uh, Twitter and, and, and such. Um, wow, it's 18, it's 130 there. Um, Cheaper, man. California's got the best prices for some reason. I guess it's because the uh, some things get shipped there first before they go this way. I don't know. It's weird, though, because you think for Europe, everything would have to come through us before it would get to you guys. But I don't know. It's 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 scary. The weird thing is that Allardyce is $215 here, believe it or not. So... <laughs> it's our Glendronic prices are absolutely uh, horrible um, in Maryland, at least. Yeah, it depends on where you look. That's just true. Hey, Whiskey Throttle, good to see you, man. Daniel, wow. <laughs> have you, uh, hey, Daniel, have you had either one of these, a Glenelicky? Uh This is the 18, or a Bladnock. Uh, this is the 15, uh, the Adela specifically. Uh, if you had either one, would you think good, bad, and different? I, I like both. Uh, this one is solid. I like this one a, uh, slightly. Uh, it's it's tough. I like the the power of the initial palette of the fifteen and the nose. I like the complexity and the finish. Of this guy just as much so it's um, it's kind of a it's a, it's, a, it's it's a kind of a nice shootout in a way but they're both on par both high caliber for different reasons yes yeah, good scotch is my bit but worth it worth it uh, Dram says because I also see it for 146 Wow that is so cheap. <laughs> if you're talking about the Allardyce man, my God, I've got to, yeah, I've got to do better uh, searches on that kind of stuff because our Glendronic prices here are, are absolutely through the roof. The cast strength ten year old is my fave, even when over there. Twenty. Hold on. The cast strength ten was my fave, even over there. Twenty five year old. I'm not surprised though, because. I know this like, Deanston has got a really new, uh, it's a 10 PX cask 
whiskey, and I liked it better than the um, some of the older stuff, like the Deanston 18. Even um, I liked that the, the PX10 was 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 solid. I think because it was higher ABV. Uh, Dre was talking about the Glenelg. Uh, oh, 18 for 150. Yeah, yeah. This uh, I think here was uh, 150 ish, but. Uh, Too many pieces of paper. <laughs> Glenn Elke. Come on. Takes two hands. <laughs> Glenn. Some of these are throwing me off because some of them they have the in front of it, and some of them have a Glenn and then space and then their name. And like these guys, they like to put their name all together, so. It went 50, so yeah, it's uh, you were saying 146, but really, really close, you know, on the price with that one. But uh, if you could find it down to 130, then that's uh, that's a solid uh, option. Hey, whiskey, it's good to see you, man. Glad you could stop by. Oh, wow, I'll send you a sample of the 25 indie. Wow, okay, that sounds awesome, man. My god, um. The um, yeah, I'll have to get a bottle of the uh, of that one that you that 10 that cast strength that's the one turning. I was going, I, I kind of got off on a tangent. Trinity and C were really cool, and uh, that's where I saw the review of I think the only review of one Elke other than mine. Uh, they did the uh, 10 cast strength, I believe, and it did really well in their ratings. They were putting it up against, I think, a bona have an 18. Uh, or 12, no, it was 12-year-olds. They had a Glenelaki 12, I think, and the um, Bonahaven 12, and I think that it was tough. They they liked the Glenelaki even better, surprisingly. Um, so I had to get my hands on that one, too. Uh, Richie was saying that the Insta PX10 is fast, fast becoming a mythical model. They only have one left. i got to get my hands on my own probably before it's gone it probably already is but uh they had one bottle left when uh when i left uh recently so we'll have to see about that daniel says i'm very tired working on site Ooh, get it 4 30 your time jeez man that's nuts i don't see how you some of you guys do the whole late night stuff man once it gets certain time it's like rough <laughs> But yeah, I think it's this is a uh, might slightly edge it. I, I think the four was worthy on the Blad Knock for the reasons I said earlier. This one edges it out slightly, <sighs> but it's so close because there are aspects of this I actually like better for uh, than this one. So they're really close. I might give this a four point two five because I really like that fudgy thick espresso finish that I get and it's at least medium length almost long mm. cartoon face this is after the 12 Talking about the Deanston 12 they do they did they just got that one recently I've noticed um, I haven't tried it I've had the 18 the 10 px and the uh, 20px, but I haven't had the 12. They recently just got the Deanston 12 for, and let me know about these prices, if these prices are like, you know, legit or, or crap. I'm curious. So let's look at the, let's look at the uh, Deanston 12. 55. The 14, which is a specialty bottle of some sort, 120. The 18, 150, and the 20 for 165. They have the 10 year PX Highland for 63 and the Virgin Oak for 37. Let me know if you think those are pretty good Deanston prices or if those are off the rocker. I'm curious. Um, I have a feeling that they're decent, but. You never can tell. Yeah, I need to get to that Westport whiskey and wine in Louisville. They uh, 
that's uh, where I'm originally from. I gotta get back there and just and and just take a look at that store because I've heard good things about it. I've never been there in, in ever, and um, hopefully uh, take a look around and find some some good scotch. But I don't know Louisville and scotch. I, I wouldn't be uh, thinking that they would have a really great selection. But maybe hopefully I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm misinformed. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you're going for more of a, that's weird because the, the sweetness is here, but with that El Rosso blend, it really tames that sweetness down. So, hmm. Darker spice, more savory. I would go for the Black Nacadilla 15, like a Lamorne, if you're looking for a little more sweet. Brighter floral note, more complex. Vanilla Key 18 is the way to go, I think. Oh, they have a decent scotch selection, actually. Okay. Well, I'll have to um, take a look at that and see how uh, bad or good that turns out. But I think um, I think a 4.25 is good for that one, and 4 for the Blood Knock. And call that one uh, a real close one because. Uh, I, I would have both of these on my bar, but definitely no hesitation. And which one do I want? It depends on the day and why. Louisville. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're saying there, Daniel, but it's Louisville. <laughs> when is your next samples night? Oh, well, funny that you mentioned that. I do have some ready to go. We'll eventually take a look at Port Dundas, which is going to be a, a nice 28-year uh, Glendinny, uh, Glendinny uh, independent bottling, 50%, 10249. That's going to be a, a, a nice look. Daft Mill, 2006 winter release, 2018, 46%. That's going to be a, a good one, I hope. Uh, from Mr. Lee, thank you. Bono haven choi chika da. This should be a good one. Little Mill, 12-year, Dead Distillery. That, I hope, is a, a decent deal. Mr. Lee hits in uh, Highland Park's Finn, his war, uh, Warrior Series uh, travel retail, 40%. Well, hopefully it's good. Uh, 40s are kind of hit and miss, but you never know. Canvas, 25-year. That's on the radar. Um, someone sent a... La Foiga 15, which I've reviewed previously, and uh, look to uh, do that. Uh, Midsummer's Night's nice Dream uh, Act 6 4. That I don't usually do reviews on non scotch, but uh, and the Red Spot that's an Irish whiskey that uh, they sent. I really appreciate it, Scott. You know who you are out there. Um, that's on the to do list. Uh, and I got to send a few out uh, salsa wise myself. But uh, another uh, four should be coming here in the next uh, month or so. Uh, another buddy is sending some salsa in. So it uh, should be a pretty good uh, sample uh, deal. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing that maybe next, maybe next week. Maybe take a break from the purchases and just do some uh, couple samples. Uh, it does help on the uh, on the uh, money wise. Put it that way. Um, someone, I'm not going to say who, but I might have an 83 ball blur coming. That would be an ideal to do um, a tasting for because it's still available. It is extremely expensive though, but I would love to try it. I, I can only fathom because I thought the 99 was fantastic. I can only imagine what the 83 is like. Um, yeah, you're supposed to mumble when you say it, Daniel. That's the way we speak in Louisville. <laughs> you had to talk like you have marbles in your mouth. They definitely vary, but uh, I can't say I have a bad one. Some bring out more orange flavors and stuff, though, which is nice. Hmm. Total Wine Store pick, Ace. Old Forester profile. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't uh, 
thinking about buying the 83. 450 here. What's, what's your prices there, uh, Dram? Just curious. Uh, 450 is way out of my price range here locally. Uh, but um, if someone's willing to share, I'm, you know, definitely uh, up for the uh, the challenge to, to tell you which I, I get from it because I'm sure I can find a hundred notes in the 83 compared to the 99. Daniel says, like, you're missing part of your tongue. Yeah. Sort of. You don't, you don't really use a lot of it. <laughs> Only place I know where it when it is is four seventy. Oh, uh, twenty bucks difference, but uh, it's Uranus. <laughs> Uranus, Missouri. I'm sure you're familiar with Uranus, the planet, too. There, Daniel has uh, multiple moons. Uh, Back when I was younger, it was um, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, Oberon, all the little characters from the Midsummer's Night Dream. That's how I remembered them. And now they're up to like, I mean, it started out with like eight, 16, I think, moons, and now they're up to like 20 something. It's crazy. I don't see how they keep track of all these satellites, of all these planets. Uh, I think Jupiter's up to like 64 or some crazy amount. Your ass is a planet. It could be. Yes, it is. Uranus is a city in Missouri. They make fudge there. I kid you not. And the fudge is really, really good. <laughs> it's damn good. So if you're ever in Uranus, Missouri, you got to get the fudge. <laughs> I'm not joking with you. It's that good. It's, they got peanut butter fudge. They got fudgy fudge, dark fudge. All sorts of fudgy fudge that you can, you know, get. So, mm. <laughs> I guess I'll show your comment, Daniel. Filter loves Daniel. I have to like accept his comments. Urban and Dildo, Newfoundland. Dildo, Newfoundland. I, I've never, no, I've never been to Newfoundland. I'd like to go to St. John's. I'd like to go visit Labrador, but uh, I've never been to um, Newfoundland there. Too funny. Oh. Well, good morning, Hope as well. Hey, Whiskey Pilgrim, good to see you. We're just chilling out with the uh, Glenelaki 18 and the Bladnock Adela 15. Um, <laughs> your name is want to try our fudge. That's exactly how it goes. Yeah. My mom actually, I think, uh, yeah, she went through there and, uh, was on a trip and they stopped off and got me this shirt and got me some fudge and I ate it and I actually liked it. It was pretty good. <laughs> I, you know, what's in the name? You won't forget it. I guarantee you that. <laughs> so it must be a good marketing ploy. Mm. Tasty, good stuff. Hmm. Definitely, a, you know, space side S, but a lot spicier and um, savory than a typical space side for this Glenella key. But that's to me, that's good. You know, it's real good during <laughs> the Delta Fest. Are you do you, they have a dildo festival in Newfoundland? That's uh scary. Thanks for coming, Dram. Good to see ya. Hope uh can uh find another bottle to share or something uh down the road. Joke IA still running, I guess. Joke is still running. I'm not sure what what you mean there, Ace. But yeah, hopefully uh, we can find something to partake uh, at the same time later there. Dram, uh, I'll uh, let you know what I'm going to hopefully get in the deal for. Do a live screen. For Delta Fest. Oh, man. I don't think so. <laughs> I got enough problems. I got enough things to deal with. And... Adding more insanity to the mix. 
Well, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I'll go ahead and uh, I guess we'll shut her down. But um, it was fun, and uh, these were both good bottles. Uh, four on the Bladnock, the L15, 4.25, and the Glenelaki 18. Both solid, both great palettes. You know, the noses are are, are are good. I like the nose better on the Bladnock than the Glenelaki, but the finish I like better on the Glenelaki than the Bladnock. It's kind of one of those deals. Yep, back to the whiskey. <laughs> Cheers. Yep. Thanks, Witchy, for stopping by. I hope you guys had fun. It was a fast hour. It was, uh, it kind of flew by, but uh, the good ones I think usually do. Slan Chava, Gakken, and uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance to get one of these guys, if not this exact bottle, at least something from them, because I think it's definitely worth worth a look on, on either one. Um, they had a 25-year-old of the Black Dog, but it was like $400. <laughs> so there you go. That's why I didn't go that way. But maybe uh, someday if I ever win the lottery or – if I ever get hit on the head and become smarter. <laughs> so, have it going.